your horse racing with daily racing rewards formulated. Now free for DRF Bets members. Sign up to get the best bonus in racing with a $250 deposit match, plus a $10 free bet and free formulated past performances. Go to drf.com slash bet to play like a pro today. Hi everyone, David Aragona and Craig Mulkowski here taking a look at one of the graded stakes on Saturday at Belmont Park. Going off right in the middle of the card, race six is the grade three Peter Pan stakes for the three-year-olds going the one turn mile and an eighth distance around that Belmont Park oval. This race often considered an early prep for the Belmont stakes for the three-year-olds that didn't run in the triple crown races prior to that. And we do have nine three-year-olds signed on to contest this race. Some late developers in here, some runners trying stakes company for the first time. So a lot of things going on in this Peter Pan, Craig, but I think they all have a Brad Cox trained shipper to beat outside in the number nine Bishop's Bay. Yeah, when I first handicapped this race, this race last night, I didn't have your morning line, but I assumed he would be the favorite. And I certainly agree with that. On paper, he is the one to beat. Yeah, he's definitely a runner with a lot of potential off his two victories to begin his career. But there are a lot of other runners in this race that have potential to improve, especially going this mile and an eighth distance. So we're going to talk about a lot of these contenders in just a little bit. Before we do that, let's take a look at some features in Timeform US, including the Timeform US pace projector for this race. And Craig, not surprised to see the three runners drawn towards the outside, showing speed on the pace projector, including the number seven, Asmodeus, who's shown some early gas and maiden races, the number eight, Henry Q, who I think would be happy to make the front here if they were able to. And Bishop's Bay has plenty of tactical speed, but given the fact that he's drawn in the far outside post position, I think they'll be fine to adopt stalking tactics like you see on the pace projector. Yeah, I would agree. And one thing to keep in mind, because we haven't raced at Belmont in so long until recently, is that even at a mile and an eighth, we're still going the one turn mile. So even if these horses have early speed and don't break particularly well, they're going to have plenty of time to get that forward position. Let's also check out the Timeform US finish projector for this race, one of the new features in Timeform US that you can check out when you're uh, perusing the pace projectors, toggle over to the finish projector, these finish projections uh, based on the Timeform US algorithm, considering the pace projector and speed figures. And you know, given the speed figures in this race, Craig, not a big surprise to see the projected winner being that morning line favorite, the number nine, Bishop's Bay. He earned a pretty big number on debut when beating First Mission, a horse that a lot of people consider to be a contender at the Preakness. Yeah, it was big, and I think it's legit. We saw what first mission came back to do. It's number second out, wasn't as high, but we'll obviously talk more about that as we go through these horses. Yeah, we'll get to first mission towards the end of this preview, but let's start to talk about some of these contenders, beginning with the rail horse, the number one, Archangelo. And we'll take a look at his maiden victory last time out in the middle of March at Gulfstream Park. This was going the mile distance, and there is Archangelo swinging to the outside at the top of the stretch, and he just mows down the leaders, runs away to victory here. And Craig, this was a race that I know we had talked about on our pace cast, where uh, the speed figure came back surprisingly high, but if you believe it, Archangelo is a major contender in this race. He is. I went back and I looked at the chart to see the runbacks and nothing in the runbacks from the race would point to the speed figure being wrong. All the horses have run basically the same figure next time out. And I really liked what I saw visually from him, the way he finished off this race. It just looked like he leveled off and w was in a different league. I'm not sure what the difference was uh, between his prior race, though I do think he had a bit of a tr tough trip to backs when he was taking a lot of dirt. He was in among horses. And that was obviously a very strong maiden race as well but something just seemed to click and I, I think he's a very strong contender in this field I agree about that trip to back I still have some reservations about him running back that last race. Uh, the runner-up, Magical Power, who was the only other horse that you know finished in range of him at the wire, did come back and disappoint at a short price at his next race at Keeneland. That was a race that I know was difficult to make a speed figure for, so I, I don't know if I totally buy that he ran back to the big number that he got on debut. We'll see what we get from Archangelo here. He's definitely a runner that's been moving in the right direction, and he finishes up like a horse that's probably not going to have trouble handling the extra eighth of a mile here. 
The number two is Slip Mahoney, who is another son of Arrogate in this race. And we'll check out his race two back when Slip Mahoney was a closing second in the Gotham Stakes, a distantly beaten second as he was no match for the winner this day. Rays came, but Slip Mahoney did pass a lot of rivals in the stretch. You see him highlighted there towards the left of the screen. He's going to run past about 10 horses in the final quarter mile here to get up for second. Craig, he came back in the Wood Memorial last time and didn't get the best of trips. No, he did not. Uh, he definitely had some trouble going into that turn. He was checked out of it, wound up being caught a little bit wide. And uh, for me, I think you can just put a line through that race. And it's a matter of uh, how much stock do you put in that Gotham where he was a good second, but he was well beaten by Ray's Kane. Uh, that race was in the mud. He had shown a nice forward progression when he broke his maiden with a nice speed figure. So I tend to, to give him some excuses and I expect him to run well on Saturday also. We should mention it remains to be seen where Slip Mahoney is going to run on Saturday. He's cross-entered in the Long Branch, which we're also doing a video preview for that you can find on DRF's YouTube channel. That seems like an easier spot for him, so it would not be a surprise if he scratches out of here and runs at Monmouth Park on Saturday instead. The number three is Game Change. Let's take a look at his maiden score two back. And Craig, this horse is going to be a big price in this race. And this is really the only race that he's run in his career that's been competitive. Uh, he has been much of a factor in his four other starts so I don't really know where this came from but he did spring the upset this day and finished off the distance well uh, going a mile and a 16th just didn't run well next time when beaten by classic catch who he faces again here yeah, it's hard to come up with an excuse last time. The the chart comment says he was bumped at the start. It, it was pretty mild. I didn't see anything that would lead me to believe that that race was a throwout. So I'm a little skeptical of him and not, not a huge surprise. He's 20 to 1 on your morning line. Even his best race when he ran that 105 breaking his maiden probably wouldn't be good enough to compete in here. The number four is Summer Cause. Let's take a look at his last race when he was a closing third in the Federico Tessio at Laurel. And this was a race, Craig, where I thought the whole field was just kind of coming together like an accordion at the end. Uh, a couple of speedy rivals went at it in the middle portions of this race. It was kind of coming apart. You could see the leader getting very leg weary here and everyone's closing in. Summer Cause not closing in quite as fast as the eventual winner perform who runs right by him in the end, but he's at least staying on decently going the mile in an eighth distance. He'll be cutting back to one turn here. Faced some good rivals early in his career like Slip Mahoney and Tappet Trice in his second start. Just going to have to get a little faster. Yeah, he's going to have to get faster. I wasn't a huge fan of that last race, given that the pace was pretty hot. Everybody was coming at the end. He got out kicked by a few others. If he gets a really hot pace in here, something I, I don't expect, uh, maybe things could set up for him, but he'd be more an underneath use for me. Todd Pletcher has two runners in this race drawn alongside each other in the starting gate, including the number five, Classic Catch. Let's take a look at his past performances. And Craig, this is a horse that is still a little bit light on speed figures, but I do like his overall progression. He uh, did finish well ahead of Game Change, who we already mentioned, when he won that allowance race two back at Gulfstream Park, notably going the mile and eighth distance. They tried the Wood Memorial last time. He got really far back in the early stages of that race. I'm not sure you wanted to be coming from that far back on Wood Day at Aqueduct. And he was really running at the end, but just had left himself with way too much to do. This is a horse that needs to get more engaged early. And Todd Fletcher is putting the blinkers on here. So maybe that's going to get him more in the mix in the first half of the race. Yeah, this is a horse I wish we still had Trackus and we could look up the ground loss because I think he lost quite a bit of it. And maybe that had something to do with him going so far back in the field. Uh, I thought he ran OK, nothing great, but that was obviously a much better field than this one was. Hit show showed up and ran a fine race in the Kentucky Derby. We didn't get to see Lord Miles, who was scratched, but I just thought he ran OK. And for me, it's going to come down to price with him. I, I think he could probably go a little bit in either direction off that morning line. I think he's a bit of a question mark.
Yeah, I'll be interested to see how it gets bet as well, especially with Irad Ortiz aboard. The other Pletcher training in this race is the number six, Go Soldier Go. And it feels like both of these Pletcher horses, if they run well, could be prepping for the Belmont Stakes because they seem like the kinds of horses that might ultimately want to go a mile and a half distance. As you can see in the time form USPPs, uh, this horse has only run overseas. All of his races have taken place in Dubai at Maidan. And Craig, watching some of those races, this is a horse that comes from towards the back of the pack, but he's got a big late run, powerful finisher, um, not a big turn of foot, but he just stays on very steadily in his races. I'm not sure about the quality of competition that he was facing in the races leading up to that UAE Derby last time, but I don't think he really got the best of trips in the UAE Derby because he was so far back in the early stages. And that was a bit of a merry-go-round race. And he was the only one that was really passing horses or making up ground to get up for fifth in there. Switching into the Todd Plectra barn, targeting this Peter Pan, I think this is a bit of an interesting horse who could get somewhat overlooked. He could be. I think it's uh, important to note the time form comment where they tell you it's kind of best to just ignore this race and, and go to his others, which are better. I think he would have to get a, a bit stronger to compete in here, but it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility. Um, I do have a little question to Todd Pletcher with overseas shippers. For a guy who's trained so many horses and runs so, in so many races, he didn't have a whole lot to go on. He's rated kind of low on time form US. We, in formulator, at least that I could find, we don't have have a specific uh, overseas, you know, horses who last ran overseas and changed barns. But from the best I could tell, it wasn't the greatest stat, but it's Todd Pletcher. So I'm not going to hold that against him much. Uh, I would think he's pointing him to a spot he feels he's competitive. Yeah, a lot of those foreign shippers are turf horses. This one's a dirt horse, so we'll see if that works out a little better for Pletcher. Uh, the number seven is Asmodeus, and we'll take a look at his past performances. He put up a big speed figure for him, two back, when he lost by a nose against Maiden Company, though it's a little problematic that the winner of that race registers. The two of them you know, were far ahead of the field. Register came back and was very disappointing in a stakes race next time out at Laurel, and Asmodeus did regress on the speed figure scale, and he ultimately broke his Maiden last time. And this horse has to prove he can get a mile and an eighth and also get a little faster. Yeah, I would agree. He needs to get faster even off that 105. And I also worry he's a horse who's done his best running on the front end and he's going to face rivals better than he ever has before. So it's also going to get tougher on the pace front. The number eight is Henry Q. We'll take a look at his race too back when he was a winner of the My Nat Bird Derby at Sunland Park. And he's yet another one number horse, Craig, as he sprung a big speed figure this day, a 114 on a time form US speed figure scale, winning off by over 14 lengths in this My Nat Bird. Came back though in the Sunland Park Derby and was a little disappointing, uh, fading at the end in a race that did not come back very fast. No, that race did not come back fast. It, it was bit of, a bit of an enig enigma for speed figure makers. Uh, it just was so slow almost not to be believed. It was just a really weird race. The number seems okay, I guess. Not like anybody's came out to light it up. One of the also rans ran a big number while well beaten in Santa Anita Derby. And that I think that figure could be questioned as well. So he's one. He's going to be on the front end, I would think. If not, he's going to be right there pressing the pace and it's just a matter of which one's going to show up the one we saw in the mind that bird or the one we saw in the sunland derby and then we've got that likely favorite drawn towards the outside the number nine bishop's bay this horse is perfect so far in two career starts not winning by large margins but he faced a good horse on debut as we said first mission uh who did come back to break his maiden and then win the lexington with a very nice speed figure considered one of the top contenders for the preakness stakes and bishop's bay just beat him on the square on debut uh got challenged by first mission in the late stages of that race and turned that one away we saw a similar uh, scenario play out last Last time when his stablemate, the Brad Cox trainee, Demolition Duke, ranged up alongside a deep stretch. And once again, Bishop's Bay kicked on when he felt that horse's challenge and galloped out much ahead of the field. This feels like a horse, Craig, that's still figuring things out, not one that's really apt to win by large margins. Uh, but he always seems to have more in the tank, and he certainly has shown the quality to win a, to win a race like this. He has. The one concern I would have normally for a horse like this is you see all blue fractions in his first two races and he was up close to the pace. Uh, the 
the one thing that alleviates the lace that concern a little bit is that he's a horse who's shown third on the pace projector. It's not like there is a ton of early speed in here. He's he likes to be up front. His first race wasn't a sprint. It's not like it was slow as the second. So my inclination is to just kind of ignore that speed figure second out because I think that one was totally dictated by the crazy slow pace. You see the 58 time form us speed figures, which is just, I mean, it's crawling. So it held back the final time number. We upgraded it a little bit, as you can see with that P designation next to the 104. I just don't know if we could ever upgrade it enough to uh, make the algorithm work in this case for all the horses in the field. And I should mention, uh, Bishop's Bay did have some early trouble in that race as he legitimately clipped heels in a scary situation heading into the clubhouse turn, but was able to recover from that to get into good position and win the race. So maybe another reason to upgrade that performance a little bit for Bishop's Bay. But let's throw up our picks for this race, Craig, and neither of us are way against Bishop's Bay. I think we both acknowledge that he's the most likely winner of this race. We have him in second on our picks. You're going with the number one, Archangelo, who's looking to validate that big time form US speed figure that he got last time i am i'm gonna call him arcangelo for now because that's what pete aiello went with at golf stream but i have no idea which one of you guys is right i guess we'll find out and see what uh the the announcer says on saturday but i just really liked what i saw from him last time the way he leveled out finished off that race powerfully i just think it's a race that was is for some reason the light went on with him i don't think the speed figure was a fluke and i'm looking for a big race and i certainly don't think the mile and an eighth is going to be any problem yeah, I would definitely use Bishop's Bay. I think your horse is somewhat interesting. I was kind of torn between the two Todd Pletcher trainees, Classic Catch and Go Soldier, Soldier Go. And I ultimately leaned towards Go Soldier Go just because I think he's going to be a much better price coming in with that uh, Maydan form. And I think this horse is going to appreciate the wide sweeping turns of Belmont Park being a deep closer, probably better suited to his style than that Maydan track was. So just think he has a little bit of upside and will be a decent price in this race. So the number six, Go Soldier Go for me, and the number one, Archangelo, Archangelo for Craig in the Peter Pan on Saturday at Belmont <laughs> Park. Good luck if you're playing the races this weekend.